What is eschatology? Eschatology comes from an ancient Greek word meaning last or last things, and it refers to the study of ideas relating to what will happen at the end of the world or the end of time. Various terms can be used to refer to the end times, such as Armageddon or the Apocalypse. In the Gospels, Jesus makes a number of statements that might be considered eschatological, in that they may be referring to what will happen at the end of time. For example, in Mark 13, Jesus said, The sun will be darkened and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. These large dramatic events connected with the end of the world can be referred to as cosmic disasters. And the suggestion in the Gospels is that these sorts of events will be a herald or sign that the day of judgment is coming and soon God's kingdom will be fully established as this world is ended and a new heaven and a new earth is put in place. Some Christians would say we cannot be certain that these descriptions are of literal events of what will occur. Some Christians think Jesus' warnings relate to the impending destruction of the temple in 70 AD, and so they have already come true. Others think this language is a symbolic or spiritual description of what happens when Jesus dies and rises again. Others think they are purely metaphorical descriptions trying to capture the essence of the afterlife. What is the second coming of Christ? The early Christians, those who lived within the lifetime of Jesus, were fairly convinced that Jesus would return to them within their lifetime and herald the end of time and usher in the kingdom of God. This belief is called the second coming of Christ. As these early generations died, Christians began to focus less on the belief in the end of times and chose to focus on ensuring people lived in a way that prepared them for their own judgment at death. While Christians do still believe that the second coming of Christ will happen, most think it is unhelpful to focus too much on when or what this might look like and should seek to bring about the kingdom of God in their own lives by following Jesus' teaching to love God and love their neighbour. What will happen at the end of time? Christians believe in the concept of cosmic reconciliation. This grand term encompasses the idea that at the end of time, everything will be restored or reconciled to how God wants it to be. There will be complete harmony. This is based on the assumption that currently the universe is not in harmony. The order of events for Christians looks something like this. Firstly, God created a perfect universe, as described in Genesis. Secondly, human sin disrupted or broke the harmony in the universe. Thirdly, God created a solution in order to redeem humanity by coming to earth in the person of Jesus and dying and rising again. In doing so, he conquered sin and death and began the establishment of his kingdom. But fourthly, the kingdom is not yet fully established, but in the end of time, everything in creation will be fully restored and in harmony. Why do Catholics believe in cosmic reconciliation? Catholics believe that both scripture and church tradition support the belief that in the end, God will make everything right. In both the Old and New Testament, various people are given visions of the end of time in which they describe seeing a new heaven and a new earth. St. Paul wrote that through Jesus, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. These verses support the view that God will restore everything to perfect harmony. Furthermore, the writings of the medieval saint Julian of Norwich confirmed what the church had taught about the end of time. In a series of visions or showings, Julian believed that God was telling her that eventually all things would be restored or reconciled. In one vision, she asked Jesus why there was a hell. His reply was, It was necessary that there should be sin, but all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. These descriptions support the view that God will make everything okay in the end. This belief helps comfort Christians when they deal with difficult circumstances in their own lives. What should the church do between now and the end of time? The church believes there will be an end of time, the second coming of Christ, when all creation will be restored, what it calls cosmic reconciliation, and God will judge all people, as we see in the parable of the sheep and goats. But until those things happen, the church teaches that its responsibility is to preach the gospel of redemption through Jesus, by calling people to repentance and encouraging them to follow the church's teachings so as not to turn away from God's offer of salvation. The church does not know when the end of time will be. Lumen Gentium says, Since, however, we know not the day nor the hour, on our Lord's advice, we must be constantly vigilant. This means that people should persistently strive to be prepared for the end of time and follow Jesus' teachings and live a life of repentance so that they may not be found wanting when the end does come. 
whether that be when they die individually or when the second coming occurs. The Catholic Church does not teach that God predestines people to heaven or hell, as some Protestants do. Rather, God gives all people free will to choose whether to accept or reject God's offer of forgiveness. Furthermore, they do not teach that God actively sends people to hell, but rather people in effect condemn themselves to hell by willfully refusing God's offer of forgiveness, which is available to all. The Catechism says, God predestines no one to go to hell. For this, a willful turning away from God, a mortal sin, is necessary and persistence in it until the end. This suggests that only those who knowingly commit serious sins and willfully reject any offer of forgiveness will be separated from God in the afterlife, which is what the church calls hell. Thanks for watching. I've been Mr. McMillan.